Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm gonna do a makeup tutorial today. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Um, so let's just get on with it. I popped on this new Trini London See The Light SPF. It's a broad spectrum SPF. I tried a little bit on my hands yesterday and then I popped it on late last night just to try it because I couldn't wait and I loved it. So it's a broad spectrum SPF, which means it covers UVA and UVB. You need about four pumps of this. It's a 50 mil squeezy tube, which I really, really like because it means you can get everything out of it. I really don't like the pots or the glass ones that you can't really see if you've used everything. It smells lovely. It's not fragrance from what I can see, but it does have a lovely scent to it. More like a skincare smell. And it doesn't leave a white cast on the skin it dries down beautifully which i love because i hate the tacky feel usually that you get with spf 50s or that shiny feel i've got nothing else on my skin and you can see it's not super shiny so i'm really really loving this i will link it in the description bar for you i have some new products by road this is the peptide lip treatment and it's in a vanilla scent the smell is more like vanilla ice cream i'm really enjoying it you get quite a lot as well smells so divine so if you've never tried this i would highly recommend it it feels lovely on the skin it lasts really well it isn't like a lip balm that just kind of sinks in and disappears it stays kind of shiny so you could use this over a lipstick or on its own like i tend to use it i love it it's so nice so that's a nice new one that i've discovered as you guys will have seen from my last couple of videos i've really been enjoying the dr jar premium bb cream or bb balm i love it I'm still loving it, but they kindly sent me this Tiger Grass Camo Drops, which is great if you are somebody that has um, redness in the skin. It also contains SPF 35. As you can see, it's green. So it works like a color corrector. Color correctors work not to conceal, but to neutralize. So lots of people are putting this on and hoping it's gonna completely cover the redness. But the way that color correctors work is to neutralize it a little bit. So it won't necessarily completely eradicate redness but what it will do is neutralize it so that when you put makeup on the redness isn't coming through the makeup instead it's been neutralized so that your makeup goes on and covers it so it's much more even you can layer this i've seen a few people layer in it and they get an even better result you can buy a smaller tube of this this is the 30 mil but i believe you can get it in a smaller uh, like 15 mil maybe so if you don't want to spend an awful lot or you don't feel like you're going to use it like I wouldn't, a smaller one would be better for you. I don't know if you can see it because I'm sat right in front of the window, but it instantly neutralizes the redness around my nose. If I want a day where I'm not wearing a lot of makeup and I just want to use my tinted beauty balm, then this is great because it will neutralize the redness under that and I've not got to worry about adding extra layers to cover redness or any blemishes. So if you have blemishes, problematic skin, redness, this is a great option. So this week Huda Beauty has released a bunch of color correctors. This is the one for fair to light skin. The next shade along is peach, which would work for kind of medium skin tones, light to medium skin tones. My skin's quite fair at the minute on my face. So I'm gonna use the pink shade. I'm gonna just pop it here. Um, and I think there's five shades available. And this goes on before your foundation and concealer, again, to color correct any uneven skin tone whether you've got pigmentation dark circles it's great for brightening those areas and just neutralizing any of the blue tones the peach kind of neutralizes not only the dark pigment but also like the blue undertones of the eyes which tend to happen on these inner corners as they get a bit thinner with age so again this isn't a concealer if you guys have been following my educational quiz on the community tab, you will see this is one of the questions I asked this week. I feel like a lot of people still ask the question about whether eye brighteners and color correctors do the same thing. So if you wanna learn more about that, go to my community tab and participate. And you can see, I always put an educational answer in there so that you can learn a little bit more about it. So these are great, very, very lightweight. I absolutely love the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. These have been designed to work together. However, you don't necessarily need this concealer. You can just buy the color correctors and use whatever concealer works for you. So it's added a bit of a salmon tone. So when we go in with our concealers, nothing that's slightly darker, pigmented, none of that will show through. 
For foundation today, I'm going to use Restore and Renew Multi Action Serum Foundation. I love these because they're super lightweight, they're a serum based foundation, probably not necessarily geared to someone with oily skin, but I find I get on with these perfectly. I feel like it's so lightweight and whenever I wear them, I always get asked what it is that I'm wearing. So these also contain an SPF of 30. So I have warm beige and I also have honey and I tend to mix the two in the winter Warm beige is perfect for me all the way through. And then in the height of summer, when I've been on holiday, honey works for me. Now don't make the same mistake that my sister made when she went in store and purchased this. She bought the wrong Restore and Renew. I think it might have been Restore and Perfect. I don't know, it, it had a similar name. And when I explained to her how lovely these were, she said, I find it to be really drying, which baffled me because I feel like there's no way that this foundation can be drying. It wasn't until I was over there and I asked if I could borrow her foundation that I realized that she'd obviously purchased the wrong one. The other one has a black lid. This one comes with a white lid. So this gives a really nice sheer coverage, but it is buildable. I'm using a duo fiber brush, but I tend to usually just apply it with my fingers. I am going ever so slightly darker in the colour because I have a little bit of colour on my chest. I'll do this side with my hands just to show you. It's so quick and easy to put on because it is so lightweight. I'm just going to pat it over the areas that I've put the colour corrector on. Again, if you have quite a lot of redness or you've done a lot of colour correcting because you have a lot of pigmentation, then a brush is a better option because you're going to glide over the colour corrector. It tends to be a bit more aggressive when you're blending, when you use your fingers, you're kind of like really working it into the skin. You don't really want to move your colour correctors underneath. I'm going to follow that foundation with some concealer. This one is Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer in the shade Coconut Flakes. Again, a similar consistency to the colour corrector. I love that this never really makes the under eye look crepey. Even though it's really pigmented, the actual product itself is very lightweight. So I really, really like it. I'm just gonna use my fingers to blend that in. Push that over the top. I love using my fingers because the warmth of my finger really helps to blend it in. Pushes it into the skin. I'm going to use what's left to go over my eyelid. So I'm just going to use my duo fibre brush to also pat over that. It's got some residual foundation in the bristles which will help with the blending. If you're getting married somewhere that's humid or very, very warm, then I would highly recommend picking up some of these watercolor blushes by Daniel Sandler. This one can be used for bronzer and contouring. Then you have a wide variety of shades that you can use as blushes, highlighters. If you follow Daniel Sandler, you might have seen on his Instagram that he actually did a full face of makeup and then dunked his face into a bowl of water to show you how it was so waterproof. He even used a white towel to dab his face and there was no transfer whatsoever. So if you guys are looking for kind of like heat proof summer makeup, wedding makeup that's light but still waterproof, then these are a great option. I'm going to use some today. I'm going to go in with the Hot Totty. I don't want to get this on my trousers. I've got some lovely yellow trousers on. A couple of drops of this onto the back of my hand. A little of this really goes a very long way. I'm going to use a duo fiber brush. I have one by MAC which is fantastic and I will link that below for you. I'm going to go around my hairline with this. Just dab it on to begin with and then start working it in. This does have a little bit of a shine to it, like small light reflecting particles. So if that's something that you're not a massive fan of, it's very, very subtle and you only really notice it once you've blended it in. Uh, but it adds a lovely glow to the skin. But I know that's not for everybody. It's something that I used to really dislike when I had slightly more um, texture to my skin. But now my skin texture is much more even, a bit smoother. I don't mind it so much. The reason people hate it when they have skin texture is because any light reflecting particles tends to make the skin texture look more obvious. My skin is so much better now uh, since I got into a prescription based skincare regime, as you know, um, it is much, much better for me. I won't go into it today because I go into it in a lot of videos, but I will link 
the brands I'm using down below for you. Now remember, we've not set the skin or anything yet. We can work onto the skin without worrying that we're going to create any kind of cakiness because we've got no powder on there. I like to just dust my brush off as I'm blending so I don't get into a muddy mess. If you find that you've applied too much or you're struggling to blend it out, you can just go back in with a tiny amount of your foundation over the top to soften it. So let me just show you. I'll take a small amount of warm beige just to show you, which is the lighter of my two foundations. I'm going to put a little bit of that just in the bristles and then I can buff just over the surface to help soften the bronze you don't have to if you like the bronze finish again at this stage with no eye makeup and no brows everything's going to look much more severe or much more intense but if you're somebody that wants it a little bit softer just pop a little bit more foundation into your bristles and it will help with your blending see i have two little blemishes just here but i'm not going to conceal them until i've done my blush the best thing you can do when you have a blemish that shows through is to wait until you've completed all your makeup and then mix a color with a little bit of concealer maybe slightly pink if you've got pink blush or slightly peach if you've opted for a peach blush or if it's bronze a little bit of bronze into that concealer and then go over and conceal it so it blends in with the color that you've already got so it's the last thing that goes on before powder i'm not going to powder under my eyes i like my concealer to kind of crease and move and do all the things it wants to do and every time it does that i pick up the excess product with my fingers and eventually there's nothing there that's excessive to migrate into any fine lines. The concealer's still there, but there's no excess concealer. So it can no longer sit in the fine lines and it doesn't look crepey because I've got no powder on it. But that's just my preference. I'm now gonna set the skin a little bit just through the center using this powder by Jones Road. This is the tinted face powder. This is for light skins. I like to work it into my hand and then use just a little bit through the center. And take a little bit of that over my eyelids as well. But I'm not going to place it underneath my eyes. I'm going to leave these sections here as well because we might apply some blush. Okay, so on my eyes, I'm going to use this Long Con palette. This is a Hypnose palette. This one is the French Nude palette. I'm so surprised that they still produce these little disposable makeup applicators. I'm going to try and make this application as easy and quick as possible. So I'm going to go in with a touch of light which is the center shade and I'm going to use my Zoeva 220 Grand Luxe shader brush. This is one of those brushes that makes application so quick and simple. I'm going to take this over the mobile lid in one quick motion. I love that this, again, it's called French Nude, so it's really similar to the skin tone. Lovely for everyday makeup. If you're somebody that wears eyeshadow on a daily basis or you want something that's daytime appropriate. I'm then going to take my MAC 286 Synthetic Duo Fiber Blending Brush. I'm going to go into the shade that's next to it. This is also known as the highlighter shade, even though it's dark. And this is going on the outer half of the mobile lid. So just buff that in circular motions, pop it into the socket, and then work it in circular motions downwards onto the mobile lid. So nice and quick and simple. Same on the other eye. Into the socket, circular motions, and it just does the blending for you. Use what's left on your bristles to start taking that through the socket. Window wiper motions. Nice and simple. You can keep it rounded, you can wing it out. Go with whatever works with your eye shape. I tend to do window wiper motions in small circles. So combining the two. I have an annoying little scar under my eyelid on this eye had a little procedure done maybe two years ago and um, I posted it on Instagram I had a black eye it's left a scar which is really annoying because I can't have that really worked on but annoyingly if I put anything shiny on it it catches the light so it's a bit, bit annoying but such is life 
You can use a clean blending brush just to go over the whole lot. Make sure it's nice and seamless. Done. And take that same shade just a little bit underneath the lower lash line so it doesn't look like I have not got anything there. I probably won't put any mascara or liner on my lower eyelash line. I'm going to go in with this Lancome waterproof black eyeliner. This is a glossy black. It's got like a kind of felt tip. Usually whatever eye you do first leads the way for the second one. I'm going to only do it halfway across. So we're going to start in line with our pupil. So the highest point of your lash line. So come straight outwards. Nothing coming out of it. Takes a little bit of pressure when you've got eyeshadow on. I've just swapped to this Clinique High Impact eyeliner, also in black. It's a long con one. Maybe it needs to be kind of left upside down for the ink to all go into the tip. So I'm going to go over it with this one instead. So let's just fill in where I started. And I'm going to pull the colour directly out. So I'm keeping it quite low and outwards. So again, starting at the highest point of the eyelid. Coming straight outwards. So straight out. Back on yourself. Fill in the triangle. And don't worry if you don't get them absolutely perfect. Just do it the best job that you can. As you know, I've been a huge fan recently of using lash primers because I've been going through a bit of an eyelash shed. And in case you didn't know, Lancome also do one. This one is also white, like the MAC one. So this goes on before your mascara. You want to give your eyelashes a little curl first. I'm using my Refa lash curlers, which I will link below for you. And then you want to go in with your primer. I've explained in previous videos how primers work. They coat the lashes and then they kind of dry. You don't want them to fully dry before you go in with your mascara, but they kind of dry, making the entire individual lash fuller and thicker and slightly longer. So great when you want to make the most of your natural lashes rather than falsies. I prefer to go in with mascara before this dries, otherwise it becomes a bit rigid um, which makes coating your lashes and manipulating them into shape a bit difficult. I'd say by the time you finish this eye with your primer, you can then go in with mascara on this eye. I'm going to go in with the Lancome Lashidol Mascara, which as you know if you've followed me for years I've used on and off because I think it's so nice. The only one I don't particularly enjoy, and it is their number one selling mascara which is the Lancome Hypnose. I don't understand the appeal. I don't get it. Are you a massive fan of it? If you love it what do you love about it? Because I think the wand is naff. The colour of the mascara itself is almost like a grey black. I can't understand what the appeal is. No offence to Lancome. Their products are beautiful but just not that mascara. I could understand like the Hypnose Drama because that one itself is much blacker. I don't like the um, formula if it's not very dark. And that's why when Benefit first came out with uh, Bad Girl Bang, I was like, this is it. The mascara to end all mascaras because the wand was so unique. The formula was pitch, pitch black. Brilliant, really, really good. I've actually done a review of this mascara and for my wedding, I wore the waterproof version of this. So that is both eyes done with the mascara. I love it, it's so nice. It holds up so well. Um, and that is why I wanted it for my wedding. But obviously the waterproof version. I'm just gonna take my curlers and give them the softest pinch for a bit more elevation. You can see the difference. I know loads of you worry about doing this I'm talking about the very lightest pinch. It's just enough 
to give a lift but you're not going to rip your eyelashes out so just be careful i do like to do that for blush i'm going to go with this rose glow blush by daniel sandler again these are waterproof this one has a little bit of a glow to it hence the name rose glow so i'm going to pop a little drop a little does go a long way and the brush i'm going to use is by huda beauty this is the face cheek color brush you can see it's slightly tapered and a bit like a duo fiber brush so pat that on the back of your hand and then bounce this on to the apple of the cheek and pull the color backwards very subtle but very very pretty these bottles would last you so long a little really does go a long way so this would be perfect for any bride if you want a nice glow to your cheek but you want it to withstand warm weather or just last all day even if it's the winter these have such beautiful shades and wonderful longevity um, they're perfect for bridal they're perfect for any special occasion but um, in particular when you want something to last all day these are lovely so that has added a beautiful glow to the cheeks i'm now going to take a little bit of my bumblebee trying again a little bit of my faux filter concealer on the back of my hand and i'm going to take a small amount of the color corrector because it's got a little bit of a pinky peach undertone i'm going to mix those together and i'm going to conceal the blemish on my cheek so i'm going to use a small brush to do that So now it's a similar colour to the blush that we've got on the cheek. Rather than going in with a concealer colour that doesn't match and it means we haven't wiped off any of the concealer underneath, instead we can conceal matching the shades that we've got on the cheeks. You can go in with powder if you want to set that in place. For my lips, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Rode Lip Balm, pop that onto the back of my hand, and I'm gonna take a small amount of the Daniel Sandler Rose Glow, which we've put on the cheeks, and I'm gonna mix that with my lip balm. So just mix that together, and then you can use it on the lips as a sheer wash that has a little bit of shine, but it kind of matches the cheeks. You know I'm not a really big lipstick wearer. I like glosses or a balm and I like it to be very very subtle. So I like something that matches my cheeks. And that completes today's makeup tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's very very natural. It's kind of like a daytime glam. It's just it's I don't usually wear eyeshadow so for me it feels a little bit more done up and having a bit more of a sparkle to the cheek just feels a bit more glamorous so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it uh, i will list and link all the products i've used in the description bar along with any recommendations don't forget to head over to the community tab to participate in my educational weekly quiz hope they have been useful and you're finding them enjoyable come follow me outside of youtube over on instagram where i tend to be most active there i show all of the pr products that i receive and there you can request any of the products that you see to be used over here on youtube and my instagram handle is at show me makeup Please subscribe if you're new to my channel, it's free to do so, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. I upload on a Thursday, a Sunday and I upload a short on a Monday and my educational quiz at the moment in the community tab is running on a Wednesday or a Friday. So lots going on for you guys to enjoy and I will see you in a couple of days with another video. Bye guys!